In this video, we're going to learn how to integrate your Spring Boot applications with MongoDB. We're going to use Spring Data MongoDB project to be able to connect and persist data to MongoDB. As part of this tutorial, we're going to build a REST API which performs simple CRUD operations. And then we'll go ahead and see how to run database migrations on MongoDB using a library called Mongoc. Finally, we will end this tutorial by implementing tests using test containers. So without any further delay, let's start the video. Hello and welcome to my channel Programming Techie where I teach you how to build real world web applications and improve your programming skills. If you are interested in this, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to join us on our quest. So as part of this tutorial, we are going to build a simple expense tracker and you can find out the complete source code and the written version of this tutorial inside the description section. So before going into more details, we have to first install MongoDB on, your, on our machine. So you can download MongoDB by going to the download section of the MongoDB website. We are mainly interested in the community server of MongoDB and the current version at the time of creating this tutorial is 4.4.3. And if you need help in the installation process, you can refer to the MongoDB documentation as it's a pretty well documented uh, website. Uh, so you can find out the links in the description section also. And if you're on Windows, make sure to run MongoDB as a Windows service. So if you do that, then you need to start, uh, you, do, you don't need to start the service every time you are using the database. Okay, so now let's go ahead and first bootstrap our starter project. For that, I'm going to open start.spring.io and I'm going to provide the project coordinates here as com.programming.techy com and the artifact ID as Spring Boot MongoDB Tutorial. I'm going to use Maven as my build tool, Java 15 and Spring Boot 2.4.1 version. This is the latest version at the time of creating the tutorial. Coming to the dependencies, first we have to search for the MongoDB uh, dependency that is the Spring Data MongoDB uh, library. And as we are building a REST API, Let's also add Spring Web MVC. And lastly, let's add test containers. So which is the this is the library which is um, helpful to test the MongoDB uh, layer. So this uh, test containers gives us a lightweight throwaway instances of uh, different services like databases, message queues, and uh, so on. The main advantage on using this um, uh, library is we can run the service inside a Docker container and use the service to test our application. So we'll discuss about this more in the further sections. So once this is done, click on generate and the source code will be downloaded to your machine. And now let's open this project inside your favorite IDE. I'm going to use IntelliJ and this is a very simple Maven project which contains a Spring Boot application class, nothing fancy here. So the first thing we are going to do is to define MongoDB properties inside the application.properties file. In here, you will add uh, the host name, port, database name to this file so that uh, the Spring Boot can connect to uh, MongoDB database. You can also add, you can add the properties mainly in two ways. You can either add uh, the host name, port, username, password, and database information one by one uh, using different uh, fields, or you can use the MongoDB URI property from Spring, where you can provide the MongoDB URI. So I'm going to add this information here. The MongoDB URI format is similar to the JDBC URI format. So it starts with MongoDB and then followed by the host name and port and then we'll provide the, the schema we are working with. So here I'm going to create, a, uh, so I'm going to provide the name as expense tracker and uh, this schema is not existing right now in the database. So for that we have to first create the schema. To do that, let's open the MongoDB GUI. Uh, there are different GUIs out there you can use. The popular one is, uh, I guess, MongoDB Compass, but I'm going to use Studio 3D. It is uh, a paid software. It doesn't matter which one you use. So in here we have to connect to first uh, the local host uh, MongoDB and create the schema called expense tracker. And just make sure the schema is created. And once this is done, we can go back to IntelliJ. And in here, if you enable authentication, you also have to provide username and password. But as we are normally working on the local instance, which is not secured, I'm not going to provide these details. So once the URL is configured, the next step is to create our model classes. So let's create a package called as model inside uh, the Spring Boot project. Uh, and inside this package, I'm going to create a class called as expense. And in this class, I'm going to add four fields, ID, expense name, expense category, and expense amount. Okay, here the expense category is an enum. So I'm going to quickly create an enum. And inside this, I'm going to create five different values, entertainment, groceries, restaurant, utilities, and miscellaneous. And the last field we have inside the expense class is expense amount. 
which is of type big decimal. Now I'm going to generate getters and setters for this class through uh, IDE. To be able to save this information to MongoDB, we have to define it as a MongoDB document so that Spring can save it inside the database. We can do that by adding the document annotation coming from Spring Data MongoDB project. And we are going to name this document as expense. And inside this document, I'm going to add the ID annotation to the ID field so that Spring understands that this is a unique identifier for the document. Next, we have different fields, expense name, category and amount. We can either save the document with this field name or we can specify a different field name. So I feel that uh, this expense name is a bit verbose so I can change that using the field annotation and to this annotation I am going to pass in the name as the value. So by adding this annotation Spring will save this document with field uh, name as name instead of expense name. I am going to do the similar thing also for the next two fields instead of expense category. I am going to call the field as category and the expense amount as amount. So normally to be able to efficiently retrieve a document or also a record inside the table if you are talking about relational databases, we will define an index so that the document can be retrieved quickly. We can define an index in MongoDB using the indexed annotation. So I am going to define, so I am going to add this annotation to the expense name field and I am going to mark this as unique by setting the unique property as true. So this means we cannot store more than one expense with the same name. Okay, so with this we completed the data modeling. The next step is to create a repository. So I'm going to quickly go ahead and create a package called as repository. And inside this package, I'm going to create an interface called as expense repository. And inside this repository, I'm going to extend this with another interface called as Mongo repository. So this is the interface which is provided out of the box by Spring Data MongoDB project. And by extending, this, uh, by extending this interface, the expense repository will inherit all the basic capabilities to do some database operations, some basic database operations. So if you want to save a document, you need not write any specific logic for that out of the box. So out of the box, we have the same method from the repository and we just have to pass in the object. Then Spring will automatically save this object for us to the MongoDB database. We will have a look at all these methods shortly, but uh, now let's go ahead and create our REST controller. For that, I'm going to create a package called as controller and inside this package, I'm going to create a class called as expense controller and I'm going to annotate this class with rest controller and add the request mapping as slash API slash expense. Inside the controller, I'm going to create five different methods to add expense, update expense, delete expense, find all expenses and find an expense by name. So to be able to implement these methods, we need to use a service layer. So I'm going to quickly create a package called as service. And inside this package, I'm going to create a class called as expense service. And also here, I'm going to create five different methods similar to expense controller. So to implement the CRUD operations, we need access to the repository. For that, I'm going to auto wire the expense repository interface into the expense service class. And the first method we are going to implement is the add expense method. So this method will be, so as part of this method, we'll be passing on the expense from the controller. And inside the method, to save this expense, all I have to do is call the insert method of the expense repository and pass the expense to it. So in this way, Spring will automatically insert the record into the database. So now let's go back to the expense controller class and auto wire the expense service. And uh, in here, I'm going to call the add expense method of the expense service. And I'm going to return a response entity from this method with status as created. This is a standard REST API convention for the post method. So if you are creating something, we have to return the status as created. So I completely forgot to add uh, the post uh, mapping annotation to the method. So let's go ahead and add it. Okay, now let's go ahead and also implement all the get all expense method so that we can read all the expenses saved to the database back to the service and inside the get all expenses method of the service, I am going to type expense repository dot find all and this is going to return all the expenses which are present in the database and I'm going to simply return it back to the controller. First, I'm going to add the get mapping annotation and I'm going to call the get all expenses method from the expense service and then I'm going to encapsulate this result inside a response entity and return it from the controller to back to the client. So now let's go ahead and implement the update method. For that we have to first read the expense from the database and update it. So we can use the find by ID method to read the expense from the database using the ID field. I'm going to add 
uh, or else through for the optional and through a runtime exception in case an expense is not found with the given ID. When we find the expense, we should be updating it. So I'm going to map the fields and save it back to the database using the save method. Now, if you are persisting an object for the first time, we can use the insert method. And if the object already exists inside the database, and you want to update it, you can use the save method. So I'm going to go back to the controller and this time this is an update request. So according to the rest conventions, we have to use the put request. So I'm going to add the put mapping annotation for the update expense method. And let's call the update expense method from the service and return a response entity with status as okay. The next method we are going to implement is the get expense by name method. Here we are trying to read an expense record with the help of the name field. If you remember, the name field is already indexed. So I'm going to define a new method inside the expense repository called find by name. And this method takes in the name as the method parameter. So instead of relying on Spring's magic to retrieve the record by the name, we can also provide a custom query to Spring data. In this case, I can provide the, the raw Mongo query to find an expense by its name. I can do that by using the query annotation and inside this annotation, I'm going to type in the query, but instead of hard coding the value I need, we are going to add a placeholder, which is like a question mark and zero, which references the first parameter of the method. If you want to have values to the query, you can just increment this number. If you want to have other values to the query, you can just increment this number based on the parameters, based on the number of parameters of the method. So if you want to read by name and amount, we can pass in the placeholder for name as question mark zero and amount as question mark one. For now, we just want to query with the name. So I'm going to reset this and go back to the service. I'm going to call the find by name method from the expense repository and do some exception handling by throwing a runtime exception if the optional return from the repository is empty. Back inside the controller, I am going to add the get mapping annotation to the method and we will receive the name of the expense as the path variable. So I am going to define the path variable here called name and pass this name to the get expense by name method inside the expense service. And now I'm going to return the result back to the client by encapsulating inside the resist inside the response entity with status as OK. So now let's handle the last remaining method, the delete expense method. Back to the expense service, I'm going to call the delete by ID method from the expense repository and pass in the ID we receive from the client. Back to the controller, I'm going to add the annotation and define the path variable as a string variable with name as ID and pass this variable to the delete expense method of the expense service. And as usual, I'm going to return a response entity from the delete method. And this time, I'm going to use the status as no content because that is the appropriate written type for we have to use for the delete request. So we completed the implementation part. So now I'm going to start the application and go to Postman client to make some REST API requests. So first, we are going to test whether we are able to add an expense or not. For that, I'm going to make a post call to the URL localhost 8080 slash API slash expense. And we're going to provide the body of this post request. I'm going to add some random values for the expense name, category, and amount fields. And when you click on the send button, you can see that we are receiving the response as 201 created. And as we are not sending back any response values, we are just seeing the response body as empty. So let's test out the get all expenses method. Now I'm going to make a get call to localhost 8080 slash API slash expense uh, URL. And now you can see that we have received the expense we have created as part of the post call. So let's continue to test these changes. 
So we reached to the end of this tutorial. I hope you learned something about how to uh, integrate your Spring Boot applications with MongoDB. And if you like this tutorial, please don't forget to like and share with, with your colleagues and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this. I'll see you in the next tutorial. And until then, happy coding techies.